Yo, what's good, everyone? It's your boys, Jimmy, Daz, and Defar. Hello, Hello, mate. All right. Hello, mate. Hello, Hi, mate. Hi, right. Ah, look, we're stoked to be joined again. It's by our mate from the States, the king of old London town. It's Alexander Jones from On Death. How are you, man? I am so good. Even better right now that I'm talking to you guys, my fucking lads. How are we? How are we feeling? Yay! Yeah, that's that's, buzzing, that's all good, mate. Buzzing. Yeah, Hell we're yeah. we're buzzing, man. Um, so I think obviously we last saw you, dude. Um, on that tour, that was like your first European headline run. Uh, it's fair to say things have just been going from strength to strength in the undev in the undeath camp since Rise from the Grave came out. Yeah, I mean, I, I try. It's hard, like when you're when you're in it, to really see what the perception of your own band is from everybody else. You know, it, it's kind of tough to get like a good read on how things are going. But I, uh, yeah, I, I I would say things have been going pretty well. I I kind of where I'm at is every show that we play, I go into it like. All right, you know, there's going to be either uh, nobody here or enough people that the room is full, and either way, I'm going to do my best to have a good time. <laughs> That's the spirit, man. That's the spirit to go into it. Um, Def, we actually saw, just thinking, we saw Undead supporting Municipal Waste, didn't we? Yes. In, um, in London. And that was cool, because we were talking on the way there. We were like, I wonder how they'll go down in front of a, like, a, a, a thrash crowd. And fucking hell, man, them sets... The one we saw in London, anyway, was an absolute banger. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, yeah, that, that was a fun tour, and that was kind of a... Whoever put that together, I think, really saw the bigger picture in a way that I, I thought was very cool, because, yeah, like, on paper, us and Municipal Waste and Gel, we're not uh, similar-sounding bands. You know, obviously, Municipal Waste is very thrash, and we're pretty straight-up death metal, and Gel is, uh, like, you know, a hardcore band, but... Um, we all kind of have a similar live vibe, I yeah. want to say. Like, there's definitely that party aspect to all of our sets that makes for a very uniform feeling tour package, even if the music is very disparate. So, I, when we first got the offer to do that tour, that was that was a no brainer for all of us for for that exact reason. And it was a great time. We we loved that tour. Yeah, man, it was wicked. So, obviously, uh, more insane has now been announced. Um, how hard? How hard is this bit for you now? Is between the announcement of the album and the album dropping, because it's obviously it's coming out October fourth. So we're still a couple of months away from release. Is this like, oh fucking, I just want to get this out there, man. Yeah, that's how it always is, you know. And it's it's even tougher because you know we've been playing some of these songs well i mean we've been playing brandish the blade for like over a year now mm. um we've we've had that one written since like late 2022 oh. and there's other stuff that you know like there's songs on the record like cramp caskets and uh i think suture for war that we've been kicking around for not quite as long but they've been in and out of our set ever since we wrote them so oh, sick. it goes it goes back even farther, you know, these, it's just like the classic adage about releasing new music is that, like, it's new to everybody else, but it's it's already kind of old to us. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. But that, which is fine. I mean, I love playing those songs, but that, it, it's kind of crazy that Brandish the Blade is, like, just now coming out, because to me, that song, like, I'm already starting to think of that song, and I'm like, <laughs> man, you know, this this is kind of old. <laughs> <laughs> When are, when are we going to introduce something new? But no, I, I love playing it. That, that one's going to stay in our set for a while. But yeah, I mean, uh, that's that's always the toughest part. It's just waiting for everybody else to hear it. And, you know, there's stuff that, like, I just want people to hear the whole context of the record. That's the big thing is we're, we're an albums band and uh, we still believe in releasing albums and not just dropping like single after single after single. We want like a, a package that people can consume and uh, that that's what I always look forward to the most every time that we announce stuff like this is for people to actually be able to sit down and listen to the whole record front to back. So, yeah, I'm just kind of counting the days until people can finally do that. Yeah, sick, man. I mean, it was hard enough for us because uh, our friend Will at Prosthetic sent it to us a little bit early. And he was like, don't you dare fucking tell anyone about this. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, had like... to, we had to bribe that. <laughs> we, had to, <laughs> we had to get the sweets out, man, to fucking stop. <laughs> 
It's like the one of the worst yeah. times of my life. <laughs> you know but that like, me the with best. the kid in class with the vein in the side of his head. That, that was that. Like, <laughs> that, that was, was all us, of us. Man. That was us, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's so cool. Um, so, dude, like, the first thing that you notice the second you press play on this album, like, sonically, this is such a big step up for undeath in, in terms of production um so you obviously you worked with uh, mark lewis on this who's done like cannibal corpse dying fetus nile the black dahlia murder it's just like a who's who of sick fucking sounding death metal bands like has he been someone who's been on your radar since the start uh, of you like oh i would love to produce uh, work with him one day yeah i mean maybe not the start but certainly like uh from the time that uh, we were getting ready to release Rise on the Grave. He was somebody that we were kind of kicking around internally for doing the next one because, yeah, like we, it's just one of those things you don't put together until it's time, right? Like, yeah, we, when we were talking about how we wanted more insane to sound, uh, we were kind of going over references within the band of records that we love the way that they sound and, there were there were ones like you know skeletal domain the cannibal record there was all like these black dahlia murder records like oh i love the drum sound on these dahlia records uh i love the way the guitars were produced on this cannibal record and and then the common factor there was just mark lewis and then it was just a matter of like not being dumb enough for a second to look down <laughs> at the liner notes of all of these records and be like <laughs> hey this one guy was involved in all of them like maybe we should reach out <laughs> to him but so it, it was like that but yeah i mean we we did its time with with our with our boy scoops down in philly and you know i love the way those records sound i mean he did lesions too and um i think he did a great job with them and they're definitely yeah. like the the style that we were looking for for those albums but yeah that was definitely a thing that from the moment we were done with them th that was a conversation that we were having like we want the next record to just expand we wanted to like just be bigger and brighter and not necessarily like more produced, but we just wanted it to be more in your face and less like claustrophobic because yeah. that's kind of the thing with the first two records is that they're, they're very kind of intensely claustrophobic sounding albums, but the next one we wanted it, especially with the way the songs were coming around, we wanted it to just be bigger. We wanted yeah. everything to be bigger and brighter. And that's Mark Lewis's whole MO is he's a big, bright, loud producer and we talked about working with him for a while. We thought about how cool it might be. And then, you know, somebody at Prosthetic let him know that we were interested in maybe meeting him. And he came out to a show that we were playing in uh, Alabama. And that was kind of like a, a fateful meeting because we were on a, a tour and I was just not having a good time for a number of reasons. I mean, I was, my voice was giving me a lot of problems. I was sick. I was just like in a really weird headspace. And then I heard that Mark Lewis was going to be coming to the show we're playing in fucking Alabama of all places. And I was like, man, I'm in no position to meet this guy right now. Like, I don't want to meet anybody. Like, I just want to be alone in my, in my misery. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> then he came out to the show and it was just like, it was like that, you know, like we just clicked and he got all of our senses of humor. Like, and he just immediately seemed like the kind of guy that we would be stoked to work with. So yeah. And then the rest is history, I suppose. Oh, that's really cool, man. Um, so, like, I, I, you actually answered my question. I was going to ask, like, did you have albums as like points of reference for, for how you wanted this to sound? But we all said, didn't we, when, when we were chatting about the album after we first heard it, we were like, we were like, it's it's got a real like modern day Cannibal Corpse mm. feel mm. to the to the production, and they're like one of the best sounding death metal bands out there, man. So to be out to be compared to like when this album drops I, I i can see a lot of people will be like yeah you could like comparing to them to them sort of bands is going to be massive for, for fucking undeath i think well cool man i mean i i appreciate you, you saying that for sure and yeah i mean it's just like the, the organicness of everything is really important to us you mm. know we don't like we wanted it to be more worked on in the studio but not in the sense we wanted the things to be like juiced up you know we just yeah. wanted to actually spend more time in the studio like making sure that tones and drum sounds and room sounds and all that stuff was as dialed in as it could possibly be because for every record that we've done before it was very like flying by the seat of your pants you know it's like okay we scrounged enough enough money to do a week and a half in the studio so we're gonna get all the drum tracks done in two days 
and then we're just gonna like fucking go and then if there's any mistakes we'll do our best to fix them on the last day and then that's it but with this one it was like we really wanted to have studio time and i think yeah that that's where uh a lot of the the change in sound comes from it's just the fact that we had more time this time around you know we were in there for a month which is crazy sick is, is mark the kind of producer dude who'll be like who'll chip in with ideas on song structures and and things like that yeah i mean he uh he definitely had ideas but it, it was kind of like a running joke that we had from the very beginning of the the process uh because we came into the studio with the album done you know like we always do and we like everything was 100 percent finished uh there was maybe a couple parts that we needed to tweak some lyrics on and maybe a couple like arrangements here and there that we wanted to just kind of like experiment with while we had all this free time but yeah the record was done and mark thought that was hilarious because <laughs> he i i mean he never explicitly said this but i i definitely got the sense from the amount that he commented on that fact that he's used to working with a lot of bands who come with nothing you know <laughs> or or they're like they have some riffs and some drum patterns and some vocals and some like ideas and then they yeah. kind of leave it up to him to just pull it all together uh but for us you know he would be like <laughs> not to throw him under the bus but he would be like you guys should do this here and we would be like no <laughs> they would just be like okay uh, he, i mean i i i like that's true but he he did also have some ideas about uh how we should arrange certain stuff and uh we did listen to him on a few things but yeah his his role was definitely way less in like the producing us side of things and more in the making sure everything sounded the best it could but I will say, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm climbing on him a little bit. I love the guy, but uh, one thing that he definitely did step in and help us with was like adding lyrics to songs. Oh, cool. Because that's kind of a thing with, with us, and especially with the way that like Kyle writes songs, is that we'll have these super dense verses and choruses, and then there will be like a minute and a half of just like no vocals, and everybody will just like rip out. Um, and there were definitely a couple of songs on the record that had that but it went on for maybe a little too long it's just like and mark would comment on it and he would say you know hey there's no vocals in this song for like two minutes and we'd be like oh yeah you're right like we should probably add something here but <laughs> yeah he, he was awesome he, he was awesome to work with and i definitely want to again for sure oh sick that's probably the easiest he's he's probably going home after recording on death be like oh, <laughs> no for feet up i've not to do much <laughs> can't wait to put these slides again <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he, he definitely is the kind of guy that, that he works with a lot of bands who they have to build everything up from scratch. I mean, you know, that's not to say that on death are a bunch of fucking road scholars who came in there with, uh, <laughs> like, you know, all these theses on death metal. Like, we just, <laughs> we we had 10 songs and we were just ready to go. And we, we tried to make his job as easy as possible. That's wicked, man. Um, so there's, like... I, I know it's going to sound funny saying there's uh, hints of new flavours on this record, like you're saying, because Brandish the Blade now is like a few years old. But, you know, you've got like that breakdown uh, in the middle that will have like, you can imagine people at Sound and Fury doing their fucking best <laughs> Daniel LaRusso impressions when that bit drops. <laughs> like, um, and then you've got like um, Suited for War has got like an almost classic mellow death feel uh, to it in places. Yeah. Um were these conscious decisions to add in new little bits and bobs, or is it just the way uh, Kyle writes and, and Jeremy writes that these little flavors are coming in as they're progressing as songwriters? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. Like, I, I, I don't know. If, it's sort of like yes and no, right? Because it's not like we get into the, the practice space and we're like, all right, boys, like, time to write a mellow death song. You know, it's not, yeah. it's not quite that obvious, but uh, you also, you're influenced by stuff, whether you like it or not. And, yeah. you know, with the amount of Appagates that Kyle and I listened to, like, it was kind of only a matter of time before we started writing some shit that sounded like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like, yeah. Like, I think with, with Rise from the Grave, we were inching very close to that. And that's not to say that it's about to have this, like, big mellow death crossover moment. Like, I think we're always going to be kind of in our own lane. But, um, yeah, you just... Stuff kind of seeps into your writing style, whether you are fully cognizant of it or not. And with the more mellow death kind of leanings, like 
on Suture for War and a little bit on Brandish. Uh, it just kind of it, it felt natural. It was uh, it was just stuff that we were writing and it just felt good, so we just kept doing it. And it really was as simple as that. Yeah, sick. Um, I really can't wait till like Kyle's love of Hammerfall starts seeping into uh, <laughs> seeping into <laughs> Undead. <laughs> um, dude, I mean, he, we've had so many conversations, like, uh, like sort of half joking about writing a song called Undead, just about like what it's like being an Undead from like a very kind of man of war perspective. Like, <laughs> we're touring on motorcycles and shit, and. We always uh, we joke about it, but then there's kind of a sober moment at the end, of joking where we're like, "Nah, we should do that for real. <laughs> that'd be that'd be hilarious." But dude, you like said it now. You get it. it. You've said it, man. You've got to do it now. I want to hear this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like uh, I feel like that would be the thing that made anybody who was a fan of our band just turn on us overnight. <laughs> <laughs> the single cover's got you guys all in loincloths and. Uh... <laughs> and swords in the air and all that shit. <laughs> it's, it's only a matter of time. Um, dude, Rick, this is the moment now where we're sorry that we're gonna have to blow some smoke up you, dude. But your this is easily your best vocal performance on this record, man. Like your vocal Thank range you. on this record seems to have like expanded by two or three different times. Like, is this something you've really consciously been working on, or or is that always have you always had it in there, but just never the right songs to do it over? Well, well, thank you. I mean, yeah, I, I have been working on it, and it's... I'll, I'll try not to, to ramble too much, but... Um, yeah, go for it, man. It, you know, it's been a process. Like, when we did Lesions, I had never done death metal vocals before in a band. Like, I was just kind of trying my best, and then we kind of rolled right into the lesions and through rise from the grave, right? Like there really wasn't that much time in between those records and um, at least recording them. And I didn't really have any experience touring. We only played like a dozen or so, so a dozen or so shows in between those two albums, I think. So like we were pretty green as far as being a band. And I definitely was very green as far as being a vocalist and, you know, in between it's time and this new record, we've toured so much and yeah. we've we've played so many places and we've had so many different experiences touring and it's all kind of allowed me uh, to to like hone my chops a little bit and figure out what works and what doesn't work and you know it's allowed me to get more confident in different parts of my range and to like explore that range and figure out what my range is and it's it's really been like just a a uh, two two and a half year long learning experience, and uh, you know, I was aware of what I felt like I could pull off confidently on the road. You know, I I was conscious of what I could do live and how I could. You know, I was starting to formulate in my mind how I could translate that into the studio. And you know, when we did the first two records, we were working with Scoops, who I I love. I can't say that enough, but he's not like a metal guy. You know, yeah. he doesn't really track metal bands. He doesn't know what metal vocalists are necessarily looking to do. So I would, I, I was a little bit self-conscious in that environment. I didn't want to like stretch out too much. And when I would ask him how things were, he would just be like, yeah, you know, it sounds great because he didn't really yeah. know any better. It, and it does, so, yeah. Well, thanks, but yeah, there's <laughs> no fault of his own. He's just, he's just trying to get the record done, which is I totally respect him for. But with Mark, he was the kind of guy that, you know, I came in and I knew what I wanted to do and he was able to kind of coach me to get there. And I definitely started the process being like, uh, okay, I can do this, but I can't do this. And I would try to explain these things to him. Like, I'm not so confident in my higher register yet. Like, I don't think I can do that. And he would just be like, no, you can and, and we'll get there. And nobody had ever really talked to me like that before. Nobody had ever kind of coached me like that. So he the, the mix between all the tricks that i learned on the road in the years between the last album and this one and then mark kind of helping me get out of my shell in the studio like it was just it, it was a very empowering experience yeah that's so sick well, man. it comes across in the in in the record mate yeah thank you so yeah. smashed it yeah no no i'm stoked about it and you know i i also i got a shout out uh dylan from full of hell because 
because I remember, I mean, he's obviously an insane vocalist. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I always felt like when I'm just practicing at home and like screaming in my apartment like an asshole, like <laughs> I'll just be, I'm doing it sitting down. And it, it feels so much more comfortable in like a studio setting and like a tracking setting, just being able to like sit and relax my diaphragm and scream that way. But I felt like that was wrong. But then I saw a picture of Dylan tracking with full of hell in the studio and he was sitting down he was like on a stool in front of a microphone. And I reached out to him immediately. And I was like, how often do you do this? Was it just a one-time thing? And he said, no, I've tracked pretty much everything that full of hell has ever done sitting down. And that was a really eye-opening experience for me. And when I went to the studio, I told that to Mark. I said, I wanted to track the record sitting down and he said, go for it. You know, whatever is comfortable for you. And I did. And I, and I, yeah, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Yeah, it's awesome, man. As when you've got someone who's worked with like Trevor Sternad and John Gallagher and Corpse Grinder, you know, it's it's a lot easier for you as a singer to be totally like, like I trust this guy's opinion, man, and like he's gonna get yeah. the best out of me no matter what. So um Yeah, definitely. And it it turned into trust. I mean it always was trust, but there definitely was like nerves at the beginning, like especially when we were doing pre production before we actually started the record where I would be doing vocals with him and I would kind of psych myself out a little bit because I was like, fuck, this guy tracked Corpse Grinder and like <laughs> this guy tracked, you know, Trevor and like, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> like, there's a lot of imposter syndrome. But, oh, man. Yeah, but then when I saw that he was like going to work with me and he wasn't just like, who's this fucking jabroni who's in my studio? <laughs> he actually, when he was actually like, no, I want to help you deliver the best performance you can. Like that definitely like put me in a lot more at ease. Yeah, it's wicked, man. Um, all all of us like laughed out loud. There's a bit in Wailing Cadavers where you drop like it's almost like a brutal <laughs> death metal like toilet gurgle for a few <laughs> seconds, and we were like, "Fucking yes, <laughs> mate!" It's yeah. so so cool. Yeah, Mark was not that stoked about that. <laughs> <laughs> You're wrong, Mark. <laughs> he's, he's not like a he's not like a brutal death guy, you know. Like that's kind yeah. of a little bit after his time, I guess, but. Um, I remember when we were tracking that one, I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to do a, like, a, a, like a brutal death metal, like gurgle vocal here. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what? <laughs> and then I was like, I was like, just record it. Like, you'll, like, you'll see. And then I did it. Then he was just silent. <laughs> and, he, and he normally is not silent. Like typically he'll be like, that was awesome. Or like, that sucked. We'll see it again. But this time he was just dead silent. I was like, well, what do you think, Mark? <laughs> he was like, if you want to keep it, we can keep it. Like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny considering he did the last dying fetus record. So that's yeah. like um Alex was right though. We're we're putting that on record now. Um mu musically, <laughs> dude, where the fuck do Kyle and Jeremy pull these riffs from? There are so many riffs on this album that are like not like anything you've heard in Undeath before, but they sound totally undeath. Yeah. If that makes sense. It's crazy. Yeah, man. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, they're they're fucking freaks, dude. Like they're just <laughs> like Kyle and Jared is just like the they're the some of the strangest people I've ever met. And like I, <laughs> I like I say that with all respect and admiration for them. Like I love those guys to pieces, but yeah, they just they're in their own little worlds all the time. And Kyle has such a unique taste in terms of what he likes and what he doesn't like and not even that, but like the stuff that he is aware of and not aware of. Like he didn't really start listening to Slayer until like last year, you oh, know. But shit. he like, <laughs> but like, and like, uh, what's the other one? Uh, there's some band that oh, like ACDC. <laughs> like he just wasn't he wasn't familiar with ACDC. He didn't like know any of their hits or anything. Like, <laughs> and then last last year we were on tour or something. We were in some green room and. He's like, have you ever heard this? And he just put on for those about to rock. And I was like, yeah, Kyle, I heard that. <laughs> when I was seven. <laughs> and he was like, it's pretty good. Like, yeah, man. <laughs> it's <pretty fucking> good. <laughs> um, and Jared's the same way. I mean, he's definitely got a little bit more of like the knowledge of classic rock and stuff like that. But Kyle, I feel like that, that kind of stuff passed him by. But yeah, they just they both have very unique and cool perspectives about music and, and writing and it helps that they're both very well, they're knowledgeable and like theory and stuff like that, but not in oh, a way okay. that's like uh, oppressive and annoying. You know, they don't let it kind of dominate their writing. They're just yeah. it's always in the background. It, it's like a tool rather than a crush. Mm. And 
Yeah, they're just they're just sick players, man. I mean, they're they're really really inspiring guys to to be in a band with. Um, the track Jared wrote, um, this attachment of a uh, prophylactic in the brain. It's such an off the wall track, but it's it's I, I think it's one of my highlights on the record, man. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy, and uh, that was one of the ones that didn't really change at all from the time that Jared presented it to us, and we went to the studio. You know, it was kind of the arrangement was just airtight from the very beginning. I really hope i mean i'm dreading like the more insane 10 year anniversary tour because then we're gonna have to play that song and that is gonna be brutal the vocal <laughs> pattern <laughs> crazy yeah. Yeah. there's a million words in it i also <laughs> fucked up because i i did the thing that i always do where i save the hardest song for last to track and that was this song and uh yeah that's that was a crazy one there's like when i was putting together the layout for the album i had to type all those words up and it was just making me crack up because it's just like an essay that's <laughs> lyric sheet dude that's the one where you can be like yo if you know this one get the fuck up here and you just <laughs> hand out the mic to people and just let, <laughs> just let them do their thing <laughs> yeah that, that it's a very it's a very demanding song yeah <laughs> uh yeah but i i do love that song though. i love that it starts with that kind of like very necroticism era carcass drum beat that man yeah. came up with I, I think that was cool yeah it's wicked and we have to shout out tommy as well for blown uh bones clattering in a cave in the cave sorry because it's such a such a killer track um and to have the not the responsibility of, because the final track on an album is really important isn't it so like he just fucking nailed that yeah and you know we were uh, i love that song and tommy always delivers and um he, uh, yeah, got to shout him out too because he did a lot of fretless stuff on this album too, which uh, we were kind of toying around with for a while and he, you know, he finally did it and I was really excited with how it came out. Um, it, but yeah, that both flattering. I mean, from the, the moment I heard it, at least I really wanted it to close the record and we were kind of playing around with different arrangements and having other stuff in there instead, but it always came back to, to Bones. I mean, that song just has this kind of, like finality to it i guess it just feels like it has to be the closer at least to me yeah cool um when are we going to see an alex track because man you i've se <laughs> i've been tracking your progression playing guitar man and fucking you're getting good dude <laughs> it's, I mean, uh probably never <laughs> like, I, like i feel like i'm uh i don't know i, I it's going to take me so long to be able to catch up to anywhere remotely near where like jared and kyle and tommy are like they're they're so good and they can just play circles around me no matter what and anything that I write I would just present to them and I would be like alright so I think you know we'll play this for four times and then we'll play this one three times and then we'll do the breakdown and then Jared would be like alright like, let's practice it what key is it in and I'd be like I don't know <laughs> um it's uh, got an E minor in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> the, this finger goes here. And this goes here. <laughs> oh, dude. Sometimes the simplest songs are the best songs, man. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, a lot of our shit is extremely simple when you just break it down. I mean, mo like, we've pretty much been writing verse, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus songs forever. But, uh, yeah, I just... Those guys are on another level. I don't know if I would even, even if I was confident about something, I don't know if I would ever be confident enough to bring it to them. Like, that's just like, yeah, that's like, you're like the one guy who is on a, a group project who doesn't do any of the work. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to us, man. We'll, we'll, uh... yeah, well, let's start a band, dude. Yeah, fucking, let's do it. I can play a few, I can play a few chords. Yeah, oh, that's that's can shit, you're annoying. You can, are drums? you in a band singing? Drums? I can't yeah. be in a band with fucking Alex, mate. Yeah, singing. of course you can, mate. Yeah, come on, yeah, no, come no, on. Of course no, you can. Do it in it. Bring the duet. Oh yeah, duet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that imposter syndrome kick in, does Come on, oh, it's gonna kick in. <laughs> um, dude, where would the uh, lyrical lyrical inspirations for for this one come from? I know you like Bloodborne. Uh, I read that um, Cramp Caskets was was uh, in, inspired by that. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of the same shit, you know, just, uh, like, I know Branch of Blade was kind of like a, like, honestly, that's kind of like a Game of Thrones kind of, kind of song. Like, I know Kyle was writing, watching a lot of that when he wrote that. Oh, cool. Uh, Stucher for War, I have no idea where that came from. I think that's <laughs> uh, that's a little bit more, like, FromSoft game inspired, but I also know that 
Kyle wrote the lyrics of that one when we were like on the flight to Australia, and he just wrote the lyrics like before he had the music written. So that just kind of came from like the dark recesses of his mind, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but a lot of the same stuff, you know, those games, horror movies, shit like that. Just uh, we we didn't really uh, deviate too far from that well of inspiration. Yeah, that classic undeath. People coming back from the dead with added limbs and stuff it's tried yeah, and tested I mean, at this point isn't it it's... yeah i mean we've got bobby army songs we've got like weird guy songs <laughs> um it's just like the killing people songs and then the fourth category would be like some combination of any of those but like <laughs> weird guy like killing joke... people yeah yeah like that's kind of a joke in our band that i have with kyle and uh he'll tell me about a song he's writing and i'm like is it a weird guy song is it a skeleton <laughs> army song he's like, no, that's sort of a weird guy song <laughs> oh man um what I've, i just i literally had a question and i was uh and it's it's pop it's popped out of my mind it'll hopefully hopefully come back to me um the dude the cover art fucking pops so hard like where did the concept behind the the world like the undeath world that we've seen up to this point existing in that mashed up head like where did where the fuck did that come from <laughs> uh i mean you know we just we just wanted to keep zooming out and uh it was kind of one of those things where you know we once we decided that we were going to call it more insane i'm gonna burp here we go um oh, good there was no stopping that <laughs> uh, w- once once we decided that we were going to call it more insane we were kind of toying around with what should be on the cover to represent that and yeah there's that lyric in the in the title track it's like my head a catacomb and then we kind of went from there and it was like well what if it was just like a big head splitting open and revealing this like you know endless sea of cemeteries and then from there it was you know getting deeper into it and it's like okay well what if the cemeteries were sprawling back into this like mountainscape and the implication is that that mountain range is kind of where the scene from the last album is happening. And uh, yeah, and then it also kind of came together from there. But after we had that, you know, we Matt started sketching it and he had it just kind of on an off-white background. And we were like, we shouldn't even fill that in. It should just be like in a void somewhere because yeah. it just, it just pops so much. And we were all just kind of thinking about if you were at a record store or something and you're just flipping through the stacks and you're looking through all these like green and black album covers and then you find one that's just like white and there's just this big disembodied head staring out at you. Like that's kind of attention grabbing. So we, we stuck with it and I'm glad that we did. Oh yeah, it looks fucking, it looks wicked, man. Um, um, I mean, um, weirdly, I mean, I don't know whether it's um, connected or what have you, but earlier on when you were sort of talking about... Um, you know, not making an album that sort of sounded so much uh, too claustrophobic and you kind of wanted to make it sound, uh, you know, you wanted to like make it sound more airy or what have you, more space. That sort of seems to be like what has happened with the cover art as well. You know, you've gone yeah. from like the cave, which was quite claustrophobic to like, you know, the it's mountain open. and now it's you're open. It's open. open. Yeah. Was that was that a thing yeah. or did that just happen to be <clears throat> a coincidence? No, that's honestly the first time I've ever thought about it like that. But that's a really good point. I like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal that from you and start yeah. saying that we were thinking about that. All the time. <laughs> there you go, mate. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend like that was our idea the whole time. <laughs> that's really we can good. edit this like bit it. out if you like, mate. Yeah, you can yeah. Have it. Just bleep. Just bleep the last thirty seconds. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. I like that. I like that concept a lot. That's. And I feel that's a that's a good like visual way of representing what we've been trying to do. Yeah, cool. yeah, and it's like that continuation from like uh, you know we're all three of us are really big fans of when like bands sort of uh, continue like, the have artwork. the continued yeah. art artwork. You know, like it's different pieces of the same big picture almost. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean us too. Like we we love details like that, and um, yeah, we're just we're lucky that we that we have Matt in the band and that he's able to do these these cover paintings for us because that's just a very fortunate situation that we've kind of looked into and yeah like on the on the back of the record where this kind of we're all connected to this spinal column and these little pods that was something that um came back to some tour that we were doing before we recorded the record and we were 
listening to all of the Iron Maiden albums, uh, like in chronological order. Nice. When we got to Somewhere in Time, and the back cover of that record, they're kind of like painted to the very bottom. At, yeah. Like, then they're just like in their normal clothes and shit. Yeah. Um, and we were all kind of admiring that. We we're like, well, why don't bands do this anymore? Why don't they have like, like most last time a band painted themselves into the cover of a record? Like that's just that's such a, a funny and eccentric and like cool thing to do. And I, we, we were talking to Matt about it, and we said, you know, when you sit down to paint this thing, if you can find a way, it doesn't have to be in the front cover, obviously, but like in the layout of the album to paint us into it, like that would just be sick as fuck. And he did, and I'm glad that he did because I think little touches like that are just so cool when they see that. Yeah, man. I mean, me and Def are like the two biggest Iron Maiden fans yeah. in the world, so instantly we're like, I reckon that's from somewhere in time, you know. And then <laughs> and then you posted it on Instagram with a back cover, yeah. and we were like, yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah, that, that was a huge inspiration for sure. Dude, the question I want to ask, the album title, obviously uh, you've, you've had two pretty big wordy album titles up to this point and now this one's like more insane like where did the where did that come from um so i mean we were kicking around a couple different things like we were thinking about calling it suture for war and we were thinking about calling it a couple other ones that weren't quite as good and um yeah we were on the, the tour that we did with 200 stab wounds and the record was kind of beginning to like come together like we had six or seven songs written for it and uh, we, we played a show in new york in Brooklyn and Kyle and I were drinking at a bar afterwards and we we're just waiting to load out or something. And Kyle was like, yeah, you know, I, I wrote this song for the album and I think I'm going to call it more insane. And it was like this light bulb moment for me. I was like, that is so fucking funny. <laughs> and that is like, it's such a memorable title. It's such a memorable name for a song. Like I, was, and I just, in that moment I was like, if, unless we can come up with anything else, like that has to be the album title. Because, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I love. Ugh, I just can't burping. <laughs> <laughs> I love so many metal album names and that have like long, uh, like medical dictionary titles and, you know, stuff that's very spooky and scary, like refractions in the putridium or whatever. Like, <laughs> like that, that shit's cool. You know, I'm not, I'm not dissing it, but for, for me, when I, I just like a name like more insane to me, it's just like, it's just so, it just sticks in your head immediately. It's like, yeah, it, it's, it couldn't possibly be similar, like similar unless it was just called like insane or <laughs> more. You know, which, which I don't think we have the, <clears throat> it sums up, it sums up the album as well. It's perfect title yeah, for the yeah, album. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, I just, and that, like you said, you know, our last two records were, pretty wordy and they kind of had a little bit more like cryptic titles not cryptic but like wordy and uh i think this time around we wanted to just go the other way and, you know we got this big white cover i'm uh, like let's just have a real simple title and that's that's how more thing came about yeah sick man i can't wait to see how much further you can zoom out on the next album cover it's uh it's just gonna be like a big eye or something <laughs> yeah it's gonna be white it's just gonna it's gonna be our white album yeah <laughs> on death's the white album yeah <laughs> we're gonna cover octopus's garden it's gonna be tragic <laughs> Juice Club or Brock. it's gonna be wicked <laughs> yeah. um so dude what's on what's on like the undeath wish list for this like to achieve on this album cycle like are you hoping to do like big european festivals and stuff stuff next summer and and bits and bobs and just that next level i guess yeah i don't know i mean i i'm just along for the ride man like i just <laughs> uh i i try not to overthink these things I, I try not to be too ahead of myself with with what i want and hope to achieve like obviously there's stuff out there like playing huge festivals in europe and doing big tours and stuff like yeah of course i would, I would love to do that but um i just I, I try to take everything one day at a time and you know i i always try to keep things in perspective like when we started this band, this was going to be like a side project for my old band, you know, and I like my old screamo band. And I was kind of like, you know, no, my, my screamo band is going to be the one that's going to gain traction. And then on that, it's going to be this like thing I'm going to do on the side. And then overnight, it just completely reversed itself. And uh, so I always try to keep that in the front of my mind and just remind myself that 
we've been so lucky and fortunate to get the you know any amount of success that and uh, opportunities that we've gotten so anything else that happens is, is going to be like a blessing for sure um yeah but i mean i'm excited about the the tour that we're doing uh in asia it's gonna be crazy i'm excited mm-hmm. about going back to australia i'm excited about the u.s tour that we've got coming up hoping to come back to europe and the uk next year you know yeah. play some big fests yeah it's just uh Gotta take things one day at a time and just enjoy everything while it's happening because otherwise, like if you can't live in the present moment, like what are you doing? You know. Mm. Yeah, man, agreed. Like it, it, you know, you can have all these plans, and if they don't come off, all of a sudden you're getting bummed out about being doing the best thing, which you you know you should never be bummed about being in a death metal band, man. So yeah, fucking yeah, great attitude, man. Um, yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. Like I. You know, when we we got the decimal cover last year, and uh, I forget who it was, but somebody was like, it was like the day that that got announced, somebody was like, oh, you know, I wonder, like, what, if we'll get any covers for the next album. And I was like, that doesn't matter. Like, we have a cover yeah. right now. Like, yeah. this is happening in our lives right now at this moment. Like, let's just enjoy this. And then when the good things happen later, like, we'll enjoy those things too. But, like, right now... Let's just be here in this moment. Yeah, that's the best way to look at things, man. And that's why I guess every time we see Undeath, you look like the most stoked band in the world to be to be <laughs> to be on that stage, which is fucking cool, man. That that like positivity just spreads out through every time you see your band. So Yeah, I mean there's it's like if you're not doing this for fun, if you're not doing this out of just like the pure raw enjoyment of being in a playing music then i feel like you're you're in it for the wrong reasons and uh you know we we know plenty of bands who uh you know i'm not going to name names or throw anybody under the bus but plenty of bands and musicians out there that have a very kind of like careerist mindset about how they want to approach their relationships with people and their relationships with their own music and you know that's your prerogative that's fine but for me it's like i just can't relate to that like I, I, I just want to play music and tour and have fun, and as long as we're afforded opportunities to do that, to me, we've succeeded beyond my expectations. Sick man. Um. So on that note, dude, we'll we'll uh, we've got a little game we want to play with you to 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 finish up. So it's called the ABC Box Game. Uh. Once again, shout out to our buddy Stephen Gaz at True Cold Pop for for lending us this game. So. We've got some rock club staples, dude. Some of the biggest rock... You know them songs you always hear if you go to like a rock and metal club? Sure. Um, we just need you to uh, tell us which box you would put each of these tracks in. So box A is never want to hear that track again. <laughs> box B, if it comes on, I'll listen to it. And box C is that's an all-time banger. I am always playing that song. Got um, it. So the first song is Nine Inch Nails, Head Like a Hole. Oh, Box A, 100%. Uh, I, I can't stand Nine Inch Nails, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Straight off the bat, incinerating oh, one. Oh, I love it. I love it when they get <laughs> yeah, the yeah. flamethrower out, man. Yeah. <laughs> Very I'm sorry. I mean, like, that's a band that means so much to so many people that I know, and I, I, I respect that completely, but it just it has never done anything for me, and I just... I think Trent Reznor is just so annoying. <laughs> it's, it's like, bro, it's like um, you're from Cleveland, dude. Like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> what next one up then, Alex? Corn Freak on a Leash. Uh, put that in box A, too. That, oh, that stupid band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. <laughs> just like all, all this new metal, like uh, the referendum on new metal is just sickening. Like, that, it was terrible when it was happening. It's terrible now. Like, just stop. Just stop. This could be the first ever six out of six oh box A, couldn't God. it? Like, just... <laughs> I'm, fucking ner- I'm nervous for my one now. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> AK in everything. Right. This has got to be a good one. Come on. Rage Against the Machine, Killing in the Name. All right. I'm gonna, that's going to be a box B for me. Um, because I, I do like Rage Against the Machine. I, I think that out of that crop of, like, late 90s, sort of new adjacent bands mm. like they were they were good and 
Uh, you know, Zach De La Rocha, obviously, like, uh, I think his politics were always in the right place. I mean, he obviously had, like, the the hardcore bona fides because he was an inside out, and that band was awesome. Mm. Um, and, and Rage Against the Machine has tracks, too. Like, I fucking love Bomb Track. Um, Killing the Name is obviously great. Uh, and when I was a kid, I had the Battle of Los Angeles CD, and that shit was, was cool as fuck. So, yeah, man. Probably the first time anybody in my generation in the summers heard like the name Zapata before. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of cool, like just turning a whole generation of of, like middle class kids onto revolutionary politics. Like, there's got to be a (laughs) that's that's kind of sick. Yeah. Um, uh, But yeah, Killing the Name, I mean, I I just feel like they have songs I would want to hear more. So I'm going to put that in B. Right. Great reasoning, man. That's what Box B is for, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. Well. and I think it's the right answer for that particular track. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. Next one, then, uh, Smashing Pumpkins, Bullet with Butterfly Wings. Oh, box A, all day. Yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Which is the good one? C. Right. C. Box C. All yes. yes. All time banger. <laughs> I was nervous. Uh, I was like, what's what? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I was celebrated. Up. I thought, shit, I was celebrating. Hey, hang on. <laughs> this is a fucking tune. Uh, Smashing Pumpkins is one of my all time favorite bands. Uh, yeah, I love those albums. Melancholy is, is a, that's a yeah. maybe top, well, top maybe. 10 all time for me. Um, and yeah, that song is just great. Billy Corgan is like, I mean, obviously he's like so fucking famous, but I still feel like he's a criminally underrated guitarist. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm, yeah. And like a fantastic songwriter, like clearly just a, a genius at what he does. And yeah, that's a that's a great song from a great band. So uh, right. boxy all day. Uh, the new album's sick as well, man, if you haven't heard it already. It's really fucking I haven't good. heard it yet, no, but I, I want to. Really good. Right, next one then Alex mate. Uh Sepultura, Roots Bloody Roots. Uh okay, so I love Sepultura. And I love Max and him and, and uh, Eeyore are just like so sick for the way that they put on for new bands. I'm going to put this one in B because to me, like Chaos ID is kind of the last Civil Tour record that I really, that like connects with me. Yeah. Um, and my wheelhouse of that band is definitely way more like Beneath the Remains mm. and uh, yeah. Arise and stuff like that. Uh I love Chaos Idea, I love Territory, all that shit, but Roots never never really got into Roots. I don't know, like, that was a little too jump the fuck up for me, you know? <laughs> and, and, like, I, you know, if, if you fuck with it, that's fine. Like, via con Dios, my friend, but yeah, just, uh, <laughs> it's not a, never really my bag. But out of pure love and respect and admiration for Max and Sepultura and everything those guys have done, I, I, gotta, I gotta still put that in B. Same. Word. Right. <clears throat> Last one, Alex. And I think the clue in this one is in the title. <laughs> Epic by Faith No More. Oh I don't I don't like Faith No More. Uh I don't like my patent vocals. Um <sighs> Oh, man, like I- I'm sorry. This is one of those things like guys <laughs> where people like bare their souls to me about this band, and they tell me like how important it is to them, and I'm just like, that's like I want to feel what you're feeling, like when you listen <laughs> yeah. to this. But um, I do. I will say for Mike Patton, he did. Uh, I think he's on the a uh, Bjork record. Mm. Um, it's the one. It's like I forget what it's called, but she's got like a, like a necklace on the on the front of it. Um, like a hair necklace almost but uh and it's like there's no instruments on it it's all human voice it's like her acapella record almost and mike Patton does a lot of like vocal percussion on it and like beatboxing almost and in that context i think his shit is so sick but the stuff that he that he did with faith no more was never never my bag um yeah, I just I, I don't I'm, I don't want to hear that. that <laughs> Mike Patton said you can't have it. Alex said I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, in <into> a <my. laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure he's a nice guy, and I'm sure that the Jonathan Davis record is a nice guy. 
<laughs> uh, Trent Reznor might be a nice guy too. And you know, if, if I ever met any of these guys in in public, I would be polite and cordial to them, and uh, they would probably spit on me and tell me I'm scum. But and then you can uh, turn around would... and be like, I put all you bitches in box A anyway, so fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> You think I give a fuck about the opinions of a Fox A band? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, the new one, Death Shirt, with a big box on the back with C on it, is going to be it's going to be <laughs> rocking. I can't wait for that. I mean, there's probably a lot of people with this album that are moving us from Box B to A. <laughs> <laughs> oh no this, oh, you're in box d that. man yeah, like yeah. see so you, when you're skipping c you're going straight to d now like forget it man. forget about it there's people out there that are like they called this album what they didn't call it like endless tormentum in the putrid uh <laughs> 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 oh dude it's been an absolute blast as always chatting to you man um honestly Likewise. good luck with with everything surrounding this album because like yeah, it's gonna be it, massive yeah it's the, it's easily Thank the you. best to date so um yeah more insane drops october 4th on prosthetic like trust us get those pre-orders in now because the album is fucking insane. wicked yeah man it's insane. <laughs> um thank you pleasure man um but yeah cheers for listening to bangers and mosh the podcast for heavy music until next time party on dudes